Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Deep Down There by Ollie Jacobs. So this is an indie novel. Ollie is a friend of mine. He used to live in High Wycombe. He's now in Southampton, I think. Uh, this was originally, he was trying to get it published through Unbound, but that didn't happen, so he eventually self-published it. Either way, I'm just glad I can finally get my hands on it. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads. One day, a hole appears in the gated community of Anton Kaur. And from that point, nothing is ever the same again. Due to the whole's presence, obsessions fester, secrets are revealed, and outside forces insert themselves into the lives of the residents. Soon enough, what began as a mere hole in the ground soon breeds madness, mayhem, and murder. From the dark mind of Ollie Jacobs, Wilthaven, the Station 17 Chronicles, comes a new tale of mundane horror that may make you consider your life, your neighbours, and even reality itself. So, let's get started. So, right at the beginning, we just get this great couple of lines that made me chuckle. What the bloody hell is this? What the bloody hell it was. It was a hole. It was a big old hole. Well, it's six foot wide, but like massive, like mega deep. Deeper than the current world record deepest hole. And we get this little bit, which I enjoyed, a nice little bit of gore. Um, reminds me almost of um, like James Herbert. Before any further stress could violate Crendon any further, Ronnie began screaming various colourful words. This was after the hired handyman had swiped his finger over what he thought was rust looked at it as it stained his finger, and continued to watch as his skin started to bubble and a burning pain began to take hold. It was hard not to bear witness to Ronnie's decaying digit. He stood there roaring in agony as he held the tainted finger before him for all to see. The flesh had begun to turn a dark red and weep blood, causing it to pour past the knuckle and in steady streams down Ronnie's arm. The more he shook, everyone noted how the skin sloped off the bone, revealing sinew that was barely holding the finger together. As Ronnie collapsed to the ground and both Crendon and the Colonel ceased their debate to go up in bewilderment, Hannah decided to take some sort of action and help the poor man. With a mug half full of booze-infused coffee, she threw the contents toward Ronnie's hand and doused the disintegrating finger. They all looked on, stunned in place by what they had just witnessed, while Ronnie coiled up on the floor and sobbed in pain. Nice. And then there's this cool bit where everybody in Anton Kaur all kind of has... Not the same nightmare, because it's kind of tailored to them, but they all have a similar nightmare at the same time, and they all wake up at, at, at night and all the lights go on. There's a reference to Amitriptyline, uh, the main character, uh, her husband passed away, um, and it goes, she'd been prescribed Amitriptyline back when Greg had passed, but had refused to take it on what she told herself was moral grounds. It was more a case of she didn't believe she needed them, and so threw them in a drawer and forgot all about them. But much like Chekhov's gun, they had come back in the end. Chekhov's gun being the idea that if uh, somebody fires a gun in the last act of the play, you need to mention it in the first act of the play. And so uh, basically HP Properties offers to let people go and stay in a hotel, all expenses paid. Um, and then one of their rep representatives says this, uh, Well, after putting forward an offer for you to stay at the Gary Hotel, an offer few of you took, HP Properties would now like to remind you of what refusing that offer actually entailed. This didn't sound good to Hannah. She thought back to her encounter with Norris and whether that had instigated the new memo. By staying here, Crendon continued, you waive all liability on HP properties for anything that may occur during the period of time the whole is present. Murmurs rippled through the residence, with only Rich and Quinn not bothered by the statement. Your continued presence will mean that any injury, mental or physical, is not the fault of HP properties. That you are aware of the risks involved with staying in an environment such as this, and that by, remain and that by remaining on site is a non-verbal agreement that you are happy with everything that has happened so far. Now, I don't think that would actually stand up in court, to be fair. And Quinn, um, it says he's got another four miles of cable on the back of his truck, bearing in mind somebody has already been descending down into the hole. That is a hell of a lot of cable. I don't know if that would actually be possible. So I like this little bit as well. This the, the Crendon has a great line here. Uh, What's going on, the Colonel said, making sure to look over at the bloody scene. Everything is under control, Norris said, smiling in spite of it all. There seems to... Rich went mental, Crendon said. Murdered Stacy and probably that Quinn fella. Anton Court fell quiet. How do you know that, Williams said. Crendon gestured incredulous at the bloody bin bag. That's not the leftovers of last night's roast now, is it? And uh, Rich left a suicide note in his home. It says, among the carnage and blood was the aforementioned suicide note. Amongst the mad scrawls and scratches was a simple message neatly written in block capitals. It's down there. It's coming up here. We're fucked. And they eventually find Rich's body down the hole. Uh, and I just love this again, a nice little bit of gore. Colonel explained that his neck was broken at a right angle and seven broken bones that had torn through the skin were wedged into the walls. Within the tight confines, Rich's body resembled a bloody pretzel more than a man. Mmm, pretzel. And then at the end, um, 
So I was expecting it to go on a little longer than it was just because there were more pages left, but it says, During the Unbound campaign to get deep down there published, a couple more tales from the time the events in Anton Court occurred were told. Here they are for your pleasure. I hope you enjoy. Orange OJ. I like his bio as well, so I just want to read that out. Ollie Jacobs is a bearded chap who enjoys spinning a yarn or two. While now a hermit, he has been rumoured to be seen drinking beer and enjoying chicken in the wilds of Southampton. If seen, please approach gently as he has severe anxiety and may cry. As well as this book, Ollie has also wrote Horror, Wilt Haven, The Children of Little Thwopping, The Station 17 Chronicles, Comedy, The Kirk Sandblaster series, Thriller, The Mr. Blank series, and Short Stories, The Film It Cuts series. As always, he hopes you enjoy. I did indeed. So yeah, as you can tell from that, I thought this book was a bit of a cracker. I enjoyed it quite a lot. I gave it a four out of five, solid effort for an indie novel. And uh, yeah, I would recommend reading it, especially if you are curious as to what dwells in the whole. So there we have it, that's what I made of Deep Down There by Ollie Jacobs. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.